Hello everyone, I am Greg Soul, and I'm here today to show you another Ansible Automation platform demonstration. This go around, it is going to be about using the new um, Nexus ACLs module, right? But there's also like iOS ACLs, there's various vendor ACLs uh, modules, which are really great for item potently uh, placing uh, ACLs, you know, or access lists on your router switches, whatever those devices happen to be, or uh, doing verification of said uh, adjustments that you would be making on those devices in a very item potent way. And again, item potency means I can rerun the same piece of automation over and over. If it needs to make a change, it will. If it doesn't, it just says okay and goes about its business. So first things first, I'm going to pop into my uh, GitHub repository. And again, these are always public so that you can pop in here and see exactly what I'm doing. I've got several files that are of importance. Um, number one is going to be the YAML file, my playbook here. I have to take a quick look at that. <clears throat> so in this one, I am using the new um, Nexus uh, NX OS underscore ACLs module. And that is going to be in the Cisco NXOS collection. So how do I actually get this collection into my AAP? I'm doing that via a collections requirements file. And so to create one of those in the base directory of the repo, and again, a lot of folks inside of their repositories do multiple folders. If you have a folder that said like, I have a, a Cisco repository and in there I have a Nexus folder and in there I have all of my playbooks. Um, if you put a collections uh, dot, you know, a collections folder and a collections or rather a requirements.yml file inside of that subfolder, it's not actually going to see that at runtime. It's always looking in the base of the repo. So make sure to keep that in the base of the repo, at least for now. So in there I have collections and I have requirements.yml and you can see that I am just specifying in the collection sections. Uh, just grab the Cisco NXOS. So what that tells the Ansible Automation Platform to do is at runtime, <clears throat> whenever it's pulling this repository, or actually at the time that this repository gets synced, hey, check to see if there's a collections file. If there is, or rather a collections folder or uh, a roles folder that have requirements.yml files in there, go in there and fetch all of those and then put them in the repository. So I'm going to pop into my project where I actually pull these in and it should be Greg Soul Nexus ACL. So in there, I just have the standard Ansible Nexus ACL. Now, something interesting a lot of folks do is they'll hit the checkbox for update revision on launch. And what that tells it to do is anytime any materials are sourced from this project, go ahead and do um, a fetch from the repository and make sure that you've got the newest files, which is great, right? So if you're ever um, making modifications over there, uh, you know, whatever it happens to be and you're, you know, um, uh, iterating quickly or processing quickly, or you want to make sure that your automation is always going to use the newest, fresh stuff. That's a good way of doing that, right? So, you know, every time this gets launched, it's actually going to go and refresh. Well, one of the sort of pseudo downsides is I'm doing air quotes here and I can't see it. But uh, whenever you do that, every time this uh, folder gets refreshed, I'm going to do that down here. I'll go ahead and hit refresh. Whenever it does that, it's going to check for those uh, collections or roles folders, see if they have requirements files in there. If they do, it's going to also go and pull those. So <clears throat> in my instance, I'm just doing a quick demonstration. So I am using the, um, the uh, collection off of Ansible Galaxy. So in production environment, that's generally not what you're going to do. You're going to be using the um, certified content. Uh, so that's going to be coming off the automation hub. So you're going to reach out to there and pull it. But sometimes um, things, you know, pulling over the internet can be a little bit slower. So if I, anytime, and again, anytime you do a, a project update, it actually just runs a job. So I'm going to pop into that job. And I can see it's still going. Generally, these things refresh pretty fast. Why is it running a little bit slow? If I look down here at the last entry, it says task fetch galaxy collections from collections requirements.yml file. So it's actually going out to the internet and it's pulling that. And since it's doing it via galaxy, it runs a little bit slower, right? So that could be considered a downside. So if you do update revision on launch, you've got that extra 10 or 15 seconds every single time you run it. Now, one tweak to that could be you run a private automation hub 
on your local site, which is generally what you're going to want to do in production environments. You're going to have your own private automation hub. And since it's going to be sourced really close to your Ansible Automation Platform controller box, it's going to be able to go and pull those resources really quickly. So it's going to cut that um, that time for download down, uh, you know, by a significant margin, right? It'll be a noticeable change. So that's definitely the route you want to go. But in my environment, I don't have it on there just because it's pretty static and I'm not making many adjustments. So I don't have to synchronize that. So it'll go, it'll pull it, and it'll store it temporarily until the next synchronization, which it will go and repull that information. So we've beat that horse to death. Let's take a look at our playbook a little bit. <clears throat> so I usually have things commented out. And I'm a, a big proponent of that, especially when I'm doing demonstrations so that folks can see kind of either or different ways of doing it. So this ACLs module, which is actually really cool, gives you the ability to um, specify a running config section. And here you can actually put the ACL just like you're going to see it on the CLI. Right, so you want to put in that exact same format. So if you do a show run, the copy and paste, that's exactly the format it's expecting here. And you can see I have it commented out where I was doing some testing with that specific format. But I didn't necessarily want to do that in my production environment because I try to touch my playbooks as seldom as possible. Uh, in lieu of that, I like to use template files. So I actually have created in here a template file that really is just an access list in that specific format, right? It's right off the show run. So here I can see I've got four entries. And in my run here, uh, in this first task, I'm using the lookup plugin. And what it's going to do, it's going to say, hey, lookup plugin file. So find this template file, grab all that information and shove it into this module option right here. So running config, it's basically going to take this template file and just push it right in. The next thing it's going to do is uh, I'm going to be specifying state parsed. So I don't know if you would call it a quirk um, of this module, but whenever it actually uh, runs, it wants to <coughs> excuse me. It wants to uh, have everything broken into kind of a uh, key and value paired system, right? So it's gonna it's gonna appear as if it's a bunch of ACL options. And I can actually pull up that documentation momentarily. All right. So this is the format it's actually expecting everything in. As you can see, it's, I mean, it all makes sense, but it does get pretty hairy pretty fast, right? So for each entry, you're going to have to have um, one of these options in here, right? So, so for each one of the ACE uh, or the access list entries, you're going to have to have this format in there. And you can see that that could get pretty cumbersome keeping that in a template file. So in lieu of that, what I'm doing is I'm storing it in this standard config file and I'm saying, hey, go ahead and interpret that and put it into this format that you're expecting it. So in here, I'm just basically saying state parsed. So it'll take this uh, these ACL lines and it will parse them, right? So it's going to configure them into that key value pair uh, format and it's going to register that or save it to the AC underscore parsed variable. So I'm then going to take that variable and I'm going to use the replaced option. So in essence, it's going to say um, this uh, parsed information. Uh, if there's an entry that needs to be removed, right, like from this parsed info, if there's something that's not there, go ahead and remove it. If there's something that needs to be there, go ahead and add it. And the output of that, I'm just registering it as ACL ran. And then if it does make a change, right, here's my conditional when ACL dot our uh, ACL underscore ran dot change equals true, go ahead and spit out that variable information so I can see exactly what made modifications uh, to that. So um, in essence, I could run this in standard mode and it would go ahead and make all those adjustments. In my case, so let me go to my template section. I'm going to look up for my Nexus templates. Here's my ACL demo. So if you take a look, I am just running it in standard check mode. So it's just going to show me what modifications it would make without actually making those adjustments. Um, I could also prompt on launch and just have it default to check and then give me the option to change it to run. Or 
Uh, if I'm calling this via the API, I could specify specific uh, versions. I've done I, um, a compliance networking uh, blog post. I would suggest you guys take a look at that one really quick uh, because uh, this playbook could be modified really quickly to add those additional uh, compliance pieces where you generate reports and tickets and all those good things. But just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this playbook. So my existing config for the uh, switch is right here. So I can see I've got 10 or rather I've got four entries for access list test and it should remove one and it should add one. All right. Now the playbook has changed. I can see that in my template file right here, it goes 10, 20, 22, 25, which means I need to actually remove 15 because it doesn't exist in this. And then I need to add 25 because it didn't exist prior. So if I take a look here, no 15 permit IP host. And looking at the original config, I see that 15 is there and it needs to be gone because in my new template file, it doesn't exist. And then looking at the existing config, 25 doesn't exist. And over here it says uh, 25 permit. So that's going to add the entry. So uh, again, I just ran this in check mode. So it didn't actually make the modifications, but it did see what would happen if it did uh, if it was going to make these adjustments. So I think that's really awesome. Not only will it show you uh, what it will remove, but what it will add. So item potently. So I can specify, here's the format, here's the source of truths for this access list. Make it look like this. And it will go and it'll show you all the commands required on the command line to actually make that adjustment. So uh, if you have any questions or comments or you think of any tweaks or tunes you would make to this, please let me know. Uh, if there's anything specific you'd like to see moving forward, let me know that as well. So thank you for your time today, and we'll see you next time.